Hello, my name is Rob McMahon. Over many years in the electrical power industry, I've noted that there is a lot of confusion as to what VARs really are. This is my explanation as to what they really are and how they're used in the power industry. I hope you find it informative. Most of you should be aware that in electrical systems, we can only measure four items, voltage, current, the phase angle between them, and the frequency. The phase angle is of course a representation of the time lead or lag of the current to the voltage, where 360 degrees is equivalent to the time period of the frequency. The general representation is in the top figure. The other figures show the relationship for lading, lean and no delay conditions that is commonly used. It is important to remember that the extent that the current leads or lags the voltage of pressed upon it is entirely due to the combination of the resistance, inductance and capacitive impedances that makes up the load. These impedances also determine the magnitude of the load. In the late 1920s, a Romanian scientist called Constantin had a bright idea. Using vector constructs, he arranged the amp vector to show the component parts in the resistive and reactive directions, the first in line with the voltage vector, and the other at right angles to it. The second bright idea he had was that if he multiplied all of the amp vectors by a constant, he could still maintain the same current vector relationships and also provide power information. He multiplied by the voltage V to get a horizontal VA for the resistive part of the load and a vertical VA represented the reactive part of the load and of course a hypotenuse VA value. This gave him power information as of course the horizontal or resistive section VA is equal to watts and the hypotenuse value gave the result that is the most easily measured items for any electrical system. But what name should be given to the vertical VA? It is this that has created many problems as we will see. The power triangle was accepted by the IAC in 1930. You can see by the drawing below that the vertical vector between the watts and the VA has been given the name reactive power. I have given it the symbol capital V capital A little r, but the IAC symbol is actually little v little a little r. The other definition for it is imaginary power, and it is this definition that seems to have created the most confusion since 1930. So what are vars? I did a quick Google search, and this is what comes up. Obviously there is great confusion, power that slosses about, imaginary power that has great physical significance. But what are they really? Well, nothing. Vars are actually a mathematical or a vector construct on a orthogonal base or right angle base that defines the relationship between the watt vector and the VA vector. They're not real things, it's just a mathematical construct. How do we use them then? We pretend they're real things. Not only that, but we measure them. Okay. So here's the power triangle with the usual units we would use in power engineering. Kilowatts, megawatts, megabars, MVA. And of course, because the power triangle is a right angle, we will have access to all the usual trigonomical functions that relate these units. The most well known, of course, is the definition of power factor as kilowatts over kVA, or the cos of alpha, and of course Pythagoras, kVA squared, kilowatt squared, kVAR squared. This table shows the relationship of four values of power factor to kilowatts and kVAR. The reason I provided these is because they are nice and easy to remember, but the power factors also has some significance. 0.8 power factor is the usual specification for a synchronous generator. 0.82 is a good guess for the power factor of a fully loaded induction motor. 0.95 often the requirement by utility for your power factor correction limits, and of course Unity, which has no VAR component at all. As well as trigonomical functions, we can use vector addition on part loads to determine the final load. This is possible only because the power triangle is in fact a vector representation of a load. We know from Newton's third law that energy cannot be lost, so we can easily add the kilowatts of the part loads to find the kilowatt of the total load. In exactly the same way, we can vectorially add kVAR vectors. These can't be lost either, or else the angular relationship of the kilowatt and kVA would be lost. Vectors represent both magnitude and direction. Magnitude is easy, it's the length of the vector, but which way are the vectors heading? To define this, we must have an agreed direction for kilowatts and kVars into a load and out of a generator. We do this by the definition of leading and lagging power factor. The definition is that if the kilowatts and kVars are flowing in the same direction, the power factor is lagging. If they're flowing in different directions, 
than the power factor is leading. Let's look at this in terms of our normal Cartesian coordinate system. The kilowatts, KVAR and KVA are all positive in the top right hand quadrant as this is just the same representation of the current and voltage for a lagging load as we showed previously. KVAR is negative when the load is leading, i.e. the bottom right quadrant. This allows us to assign directions to our vectors for a load. We can also use this idea for generation because when the kilowatts is flowing out of an entity then the entity is a generator. The vectors for leading and lagging generator are shown as the top and bottom left hand side quadrants. So we have the vector definitions that allow us to pretend VARs are real. We can calculate the magnitude by using mathematics on the only items that we can physically measure, namely the volts, the amps and the angle between them, and now we have to find their direction. Let's look how these definitions apply to the physical items we deal with as electrical engineers. This page shows three such entities, the first being an induction motor with a lagging power factor. I've shown the kilowatt and kvr vectors flowing into the motor. The second example is an induction motor powered by variable frequency drive. Most of you realise that variable frequency drives have nearly unity power factor, so there's no bars flowing into the VFD, but there is bar flowing out into the motor. Hence this supports my previous statement that bars do not exist. Where do they come from if they are real? The last example is an asynchronous motor that has a leading power factor, and hence the reversal of the VAR from the induction motor representation. Here are another set of examples. For a synchronous generator operating a lagging power factor mode, the kilowatt and kvar vectors are both flowing out of the generator as per our definition. An induction generator transmits kilowatts but absorbs kvars, i.e. it has a leading power factor. The last three examples are the representation of items that provide to absorb VARs with no kilowatts involved. Note how I'm using words like flowing, absorbing, transmitting. This makes the assumption that K-bars are real. They are not, but these words just provide us with an easy way to discuss VARs and their vector directions. These examples show how we can use the concepts of leading a lagging power factor on combinations of electrical items and how we can easily identify whether the combination works or not. The first example is the most common, synchronous generators supplying induction load. It works because the direction of the kilowatt and kvar vectors match, as must their magnitudes. Note that both the generator and the load have lagging power factors, which seems strange to say but makes perfect sense in terms of the definitions. The second example shows that you cannot have an induction generator supplying induction load. Where do the vars come from? The last example shows that the vars could be provided by a capacitor. This works, providing that the load is always constant. So that's the end of the presentation. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you've learned something about VARs. I tried to make it simple as possible and correct in terms of the engine units and the maths. I've used kilowatts and KVAR throughout the presentation as are the most common terms I use. I'm sure you understand that watts and VARs and megawatts and megabars apply in the same way. I hope you find this useful.